everybody's in charge, nobody's in charge. And we're solving that by putting Ed and Labor together and making them responsible and them accountable. Our favorites, OMB Director Mick Mulvaney, selling a government reorganization plan to the president during a cabinet meeting earlier today, saying his plan would allow the president to stay true to his drain the swamp promise while making the government more efficient. Here now to react is Utah Congressman Chris Stewart. Uh, Congressman, it's a great idea. We love it here, but we're wondering how feasible it is, whether any Democrats would vote for that at all. What do you think? Well, first, I got to say, I love Mick. I love, love what he's trying to do. And if we can make the government, you know, more efficient, less bureaucratic, less enormous, uh, that's a good thing. And I think it's exactly what he's trying to do. But to your question, look, I don't think you could you could have a resolution that the sun rises in the east and Democrats are going to vote against it. If President Trump or his, his administration is supporting it or proposing it, Democrats are going to vote against it. It just leaves us in the House with, a, a, frankly, a razor thin majority in some cases to do the heavy lifting. Uh, and it would be, I, th I suppose, something that we'd have to do by ourselves or at least anticipate having to do by ourselves. And I don't want to get too depressing here, but even if it was a Democrat proposing it, say by some miracle we went back to the Clinton administration when they had some reasonable, uh, moderate uh, proposals out there, there is such an army of bureaucrats and lobbyists in favor of the Department of Education. The budget is huge, by the way. It's $68 billion a year. Uh, yeah. I, I can't think of many Americans who would say the education in the country is better off with that $68 billion a year. But it's the lobbyists, it's the education lobby, the education industry, as it's sometimes called, that would try to prevent any cuts from being made. Well, no doubt about it. And, and by the way, think about what you just said. We pine for the day of Bill Clinton when the world had gone entirely crazy, right? But I mean, look. Uh, but he did, he did do some, in fairness to, to his administration, I mean, when you think of welfare reform, at, at the very least, he signed off on yeah. a lot of those things. Well, that's exactly right. And I was making that point. He did. He, he did yeah. triangulate. He was willing to work with Republicans and was rewarded for doing that. But, uh, but we live in a more divisive time right now, I'm afraid. And look, I don't like that, and, I, and I'm certainly not a proponent of it, but I just recognize it as the reality. And, and so if you have any government program and you have any ideas to make them more efficient, and if it cuts a single dollar from any government program, most of the Democrats are just going to oppose it. They'll oppose it reflexively, any cuts at all, even if you can show yeah. that you're going to better serve the American people by doing that. Well, meanwhile, Congressman, you are on the House Intel Committee and some disturbing revelations about what the Obama administration may have known about Russia's election meddling. It was a yeah. special assistant to the former president. He was in charge of cybersecurity, telling members of the Senate Intel Committee, on which you're a member, that form, or, or the Senate Intel Committee, I don't know whether he yeah. told your committee, that former National Security Advisor Susan Rice told him to, quote, stand down on Russian election meddling. Yeah. What do you make of this? Oh, my gosh. And his reaction was, he said, it, it was disbelief. You, you know, you see my Air Force wings. I was an Air Force pilot. This is like telling a group of pilots to keep their aircraft on the ground while they are under attack. It begs to be answered. What in the world was she thinking under any circumstances to tell them to stand down? I was in Moscow in August before the election. When I came home, I said a thousand times, they're going to mess with our elections. This wasn't a well-kept secret. Everyone in the IC, everyone even outside of the intelligence community more broadly recognized they're going to mess with our elections. And I can't imagine what Ms. Rice was thinking, telling the own president's special assistant, stand down, focus elsewhere, I, I wish yeah. I understood what you know. Was I in hasten mind. to. I, I, I have to ask, although I'm afraid of the answer because we have so many investigations. But does it deserve another investigation to look into what she was doing? What what motivated her to say that? Well, and I think more broadly, the administration in its entirety, not just her, because she wasn't the only one who had that type of an attitude. The president himself was far too silent on this, mm. and he could have made a difference had he been willing to speak about this. He could have made a difference among, you know, the manipulation of media, for example, if he yeah. warned the American people. There's a long list of things that I believe it wasn't just Susan Rice. The administration more broadly really, really dropped the ball on this. And then, ironically, they picked up that ball after the election and started talking right. collusion, collusion, collusion. Yeah. yeah. Congressman, very strange. We hope you get the answer to that question. Chris Stewart, yes. we appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Thank you.